Hello designers and welcome back to part two of our Onshape tutorial where we will continue on with developing our F1 model car. We've got to this point so far in part one. If you have not reached this point, I recommend you go back and make sure that you complete part one so that you are all set for part two. In this part, we are going to be cutting out the basic shape of our Formula One car. The techniques and skills that you learn in this part will enable you to customize the final look of your car to match your team branding, to get any features and styles that you want to add to your car. Now before we begin, I want to go back and talk to you about these axes that we see here. There is another reason why these axes exist and that is because any object in the real world that is 3D can be recreated digitally in 3D if you know what it looks like from these three angles. So have a look at this example here. In order to create this hinge or this latch, you can see that there are multiple angles shown here. This is what's called orthographic projection. And 3D modelers, we use an orthographic projection because it's the simplest way to get the basic shape that you're aiming for. There is a top view, just like the top plane in on shape. Right here, you can see the front view just like the front plane in on shape, And here is a side view, or what's known as the right view in on shape. So if we were to draw these as sketches on their correct planes, and we extrude and cut as necessary, you will end up with this latch. So today we're going to explore that in on shape. where you're going to work on three different planes, make three different cuts, and you will see the magic of 3D just happen right in front of your eyes. Your car will just suddenly appear after your extrusion. Okay, so let's get started. So to begin, we're going to start off with our first view, the first angle that we're going to look at and draw the sketch of the side of our car. Now, I'm going to be freehanding for today. Just follow along as best as you can with the lines that I create. But don't be worried if your lines don't look exactly the same as I do when I'm drawing the car shape. It's just an example but there are some rules we need to follow and I'll explain those as we move forward. Here are our axes, but I'm not going to be drawing on these axes. I'm actually going to be drawing on my block. I just want to remember which face is facing which axis. So for example, this top face here is in line with our top or our floor axes. This face here is parallel with our front. And this back face here you guessed it, is parallel with our right. Now that we know that, let's go ahead and hide our axes. I don't want to see this geometry here. So I'm going to go to the left panel and I'm just going to click these eye icons and hide them. We're going to draw directly on our block because we want to make cuts out of the block. I'm going to click sketch and I'm going to click this side here. This beginning mark here marks the complete front of our car this is what goes into the jig so we're not going to be drawing in this section I'm going to click once change my view to front and before I start drawing I need to make sure that any shape that I draw here and extrude won't cut through the canister cylinder that we cut earlier but I can't see it through this blue block so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this little view mode block that we talked about in part one and I'm going to say shaded with hidden edges. This gives us an indication of that cylinder that we cut out and also the top of that groove that we cut out in part one. The first tool I'm going to use is called the spline tool. There are two options here. I'm just going to choose the first one, spline. And I'm going to estimate where the front of my car is. So this part will be the front point of my car and I'm definitely not going to go into the groove. I'm going to stay above the groove. I'm going to click once and what's cool about the spline tool is the more points you click it will automatically curve the line for you. Check that out. Isn't that cool? I'm going to go right to the top of the car making sure that I've got a good distance between the top of the car and the canister channel here. We don't want to go close to that canister channel. We want it to have a lot of material in between. So I'm at the end of my line here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my final click. And I'm either going to push escape to stop drawing this line. Do you see how it automatically wants to continue drawing? I'm either going to push escape or if you're on iPad, you can double click the outside here. 
double press the outside. So I'm going to push escape. All right. That, so that's my line drawn. Now remember, when we need to extrude sketches, they need to be shapes, not just lines like we have here. So I need to close this line to create a shape. So what I'm going to do is, since I pushed escape, I can continue drawing that line with a straight line. So I'm going to go back to that last point. I'm going to make sure that I shoot off the car. And then I'm just going to create a random shape. It doesn't matter where it goes out here, but we want to come back to this point at the very front of the car and then follow this line directly down to our first point. Now you know that you've created a shape when this area goes gray. If it didn't go gray, you have not created a complete shape and it will not extrude after you finish your sketch. So I use the spline tool. I pushed escape at the end and I used the normal line tool to complete the shape and I went all the way back and I made sure I followed down this line straight down to my first point and I created a shape. Go ahead and click the green check mark, go back to home view, click extrude, carefully choose these two shapes, wait for the highlight, there we go, grab the arrow, pull it way past the block on the other way and set it to remove. Once you're happy with that and it looks correct, click the green check mark. And there we go. We have a car with the side shape cut out. Now we are ready to cut the other side or other view of the car. And the next one we'll be doing is the top view. So I'm going to change my view to the top and I'm going to zoom out just so I have a good area to work with. My block is a little bit off center and I want to pan the view. So I'm going to hold control and right click on iPad this will be a two finger swipe and I want the block to be tall not horizontal like this so I'm going to come up to my view cube and I'm going to click this rotational arrow I'm going to click it a few times until it goes to 90 degrees just like that hold control right click put it right in the center of your view we are now going to cut out the car from the top view and this section's a little bit trickier than the last in that we are going to be using a new function called the mirror function, which is found in the sketch tools. I'm going to click sketch. And if you notice here, I can't click anything here. The reason for that is in Fusion 360 and on shape, if your surface is curved, it does not register it as a surface to draw a sketch on. Therefore, we need to choose a surface that is parallel with this top face. And we already know that the top face is parallel with the top plane. So we need to go to the left panel menu here and make our top view visible again. So I'm going to click this eye. And now I can select it to draw. And when I draw on this top plane, it is in the same angle that it will be for this top curved surface as well. I'm going to click it and I'm going to start drawing. So I'm going to click the sketch button and I'm going to choose my top plane here now that that is available. And before we begin, we need to check that we don't cut into the groove at the bottom of the car and the canister just like before. So we will need to go here to our view modes and change it to shaded with hidden edges. Now we can clearly see where that groove is. We do not want to cut into that groove at the top of our car. I'm going to start off with the spline tool and I'm going to choose a distance on this line just away from the groove a little bit as this is the part that clamps into the jig and I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to set down a few points and I'm going to curve back here. I'm going to do a sharper curve near to the center and then I'm going to pull out a little bit and I'm just freehanding here. And I'm going to pull to the back here. Now what I've done essentially is I've created a space for my front tire right over here. And I've created a space for my rear tire. Now we might have to come back and edit these shapes. Um, you can come back and edit these points. But for now, for demonstration purposes, we're going to continue on. So I'm going to push escape to complete drawing that line. 
or double press the outside. And we need to make this into a shape. So I'm going to choose a straight line tool. And just like before, I'm going to click that last point I made and just create a random shape. But it is important that you hit this point and carefully go across. You can see the dashed orange line and hit our original point. And that's created a shape. So now we have a shape that is not intersecting with our groove line and not intersecting with our cylinder cutout. So this should extrude nicely. To make our lives difficult, we'd have to try do the exact same drawing on the other side, and that would be horrible. So instead, we're going to use the mirror function. In order to create a mirror, we need to establish a line that represents where our mirror is standing or where the reflection will happen. So to make that more clear, I'm going to choose my line tool again. I'm in the same sketch. I did not push the green check mark. I'm going to hover very carefully to the center line of my block, which you can see as a dashed orange line. Click once and click again. The length of this mirror line doesn't matter. I'm going to push escape. And now I'm going to go up here to the mirror function. Click it once. It's asking me to select a mirror line. That's the one we just drew. And now it's asking me to select the entities that it wants to be mirrored. So I'm just going to box select in this sketch what I drew here. I'm going to make sure I hit all the points. And automatically, we get a reflection on the other side. Much easier than having to hand draw and try to get it perfect on the other side. So now we can click the green check mark. We can go to our home view and extrude choose the two shapes we drew, set it to remove, and drag this arrow up. Once you're happy, push the green check mark. Let's go back to our normal shaded view, and let's hide that top layer origin. We can also hide this sketch that we did before. So that's what we got so far. We can see that the car is taking shape. Okay, we're in the home stretch. We only have one more view to cut, and that is from the front view. So the procedure is much simpler than the last one. Uh, we still will be using the mirror function, but there will be one more tool we'll be learning, and that is the trim tool. To begin, we are going to draw on the front face which is this one right here. Start a sketch, click that face, go to right view, so it's in line. Control and right click and drag, so it's right in the middle. Take your circle tool, and what you're gonna do is find the center point of the circle by hovering over until you get a square. We're gonna click once, drag out, and we're gonna get this circle to almost touch the top of the block. About there is good. Now what we are essentially doing is drawing the back view of our car, the cross section of our car. So I'm going to take the spline tool next and roughly around here I'm going to click on the circle. How I know I'm clicking a point on the circle is that the circle is highlighted in orange when I click. So I'm going to wait for it to be orange. I'm going to click once and I'm going to create a shape that allows wind to pass through the sides of the car. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom down here, push escape, take the regular line tool, click that point again, and once again we're going to create a random shape, but this time I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and hold control and right click. We are going to fly up here and without clicking, I'm going to get this center point dashed line, click once, follow that line down, and then again, wait for the circle to turn orange. That's when I know I'm hitting the circle point, and I click once. Push escape. So I've created a shape here, and this is the shape I want to mirror. 
The reason why I was so careful to make sure that I clicked on the circle when it was orange is because these points need to be intersecting with the circle for me to do the next step. The next step is called trim. We have a line here, this curve in particular, that we don't need. So we can trim it by coming up to the scissor icon right here, trim, click it once, hover over the circle, and look at that. Because our previous points are intersecting with the circle, I can actually click this and trim it away. Now we can continue on with our mirror. So I'm going to draw a new line. Make sure it's in the center with the dashed line. The length doesn't matter. Push escape. Go to the mirror function. Choose a mirror line. And then choose the entities to be mirrored. So I'm going to select these lines one by one by left clicking them. And now we have the shape on both sides. So I can finish the sketch, go to my home view, extrude, choose those two shapes, make sure to choose all the shapes that we drew, even though they're split. And now we're going to drag this forward, set it to remove, and drag this face all the way to the front of our jig. Make sure you do not cut into the jig, just as close as possible. And now we can click the green check mark. Now we have a very aerodynamic, cool looking shape for our car, where the tires can be mounted to the sides, and it's a great basis to start adding shapes to. So that covers the basics of using Onshape and getting to a standard model of a car. The cuts and drawings that you create, the sketches that you do in your three views will determine the final shape of your car. Now, as I mentioned, there are so many tools here to create even cooler effects. For example, if I choose the fillet tool here and click this line, it will do an automatic curve on that line as well. And you can, you can adjust the amount of curve on that line. Let's zoom in so you can have a look at that. That's just one of the many examples of using 3D modeling tools. So I hope you've been able to follow along so far. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of crazy looks you can come up with for the base of your car chassis. Good luck.